name is Michael Carroll, and I'm a Celtic artist. For the past 30 years, my mission has always been to pick up where the 8th century monks left off, to create new illuminated pages just as they did, to never copy their work, producing only originals, to respect the art and uphold its standards so as to honor our heritage, and to educate, promote, and pass on that heritage to the people. In ancient times, art was not separated from craft or craftsmanship, nor was it divided into high or low art, at least until the last few centuries. For most of recorded history, art served the same purposes that it always has, to bring beauty into our lives, to decorate our homes, our possessions, and even our bodies. Most importantly, it signifies who we are, individually or collectively. Art is communication at its core, and Celtic art has always been about communicating. Telling a story, passing on the myths and legends that speak to our common humanity. It's the old Bardic tradition and as Celtic artists, we have a responsibility to uphold that tradition, to be the bards for the next generation, to make art and tell the stories, to speak the truth. I grew up in a neighborhood parish south side of Chicago in a big Irish-American family, the eldest of five. And I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be an artist. As a child, I fell in love with surrealism. When I began painting in high school and college, it was mostly in the surrealist style. But it was the uh, late 1980s and that uh, style had gone out of fashion. And, uh, and so I eventually gave up painting altogether. But uh, I had one lifeline, my calligraphy. I, I loved it because it was inherently communicative and spoke directly to the people. Uh, it was the written word as art. After college, as a freelance calligrapher, I did a lot of italic and gothic lettering, but specialized in Irish script. There were no Celtic art courses at the time, and no internet, so George Bain's book was my only source. It was Bain who introduced me to the Book of Kells, and I will always be grateful. He was my first mentor, as he was for so many of us, and continues to be. Well, it didn't take long before I became more interested in decorating the letters than I was in, uh, in writing them. And I'm sure that was true for the monks back in the 8th century as well. But uh, when I first saw uh, full-color images from Kells and Lindisfarne and the Book of Duro, uh, my mind was blown. I, it was unbelievable. The, uh, and not just the beauty, but the, um, but the scale. Uh, some of the details were practically microscopic. And how, how could human hands do this kind of work? then I thought the fact that it was done once meant that maybe, just maybe, it could be done again. And so I swore I would do my own designs. Originals only. So I hit the woodshed and began a long self-apprenticeship as a journeyman illuminator. 
My early works were a bit rough and clumsy, and it took six or seven years before they finally started looking authentic. With each new page, my details got smaller, the lines a little finer. But I eventually reached the point where modern tools just wouldn't cut it. Not at miniature scale. So I ordered some real calfskin vellum and learned to cut my own goose quill pens. And overnight, the results were unbelievable. The next two pages finally had the look and feel of an early medieval gospel book. As luck would have it, that was just around the time the internet took off. And to my surprise, I learned that I wasn't the only one in the world crazy enough to want to revive Celtic art. In 1997, I launched my website, mccelticdesign.com, and first went public with my artwork. Not long after, I was lucky enough to be invited to join the American Celtic Exhibition the first major group show of Celtic artists in the U.S. The original group included our founder, Cynthia Maitney, Jen Delleth, Steve O'Loughlin, Patrick Gallagher, and myself, and was later expanded to include guest artists. American Celtic toured the U.S. from coast to coast for the next 10 years raising public awareness of the new Celtic art renaissance that's still growing strong today. When uh, people ask what kind of art I do, uh, I'm usually at a loss for words. Uh, the, the stock answer would be that I do uh, brand new ancient work in the style of Kells. But, uh, but that doesn't begin to describe the, uh, all the planning, the, uh, the sketching, uh, dozens of revisions, and uh, just the hundreds and hundreds of hours of work that go into the making of a page from start to finish. The Enlightenment page is a good example. A very complex mandala, a blend of Tibetan and Celtic motifs that celebrates science and reason. It all begins as a vague idea on a scrap of paper. Through a series of rough sketches, the idea takes shape, evolving into a geometrical framework that serves as the master plan. Once the borders are arranged and the framework laid out, it's time to begin filling in the details. One by one, over many months, each small panel is decorated with knotwork, spirals, key patterns, animal interlace, whatever looks best in that particular space and doesn't clash with its neighbors. Once the last empty panel is filled, the master drawing is complete. But that's just the halfway mark. Now it has to be transferred onto the final surface and painted in full color. I use a modern light box to transfer my designs, but the process hasn't changed since the 8th century. The monks used either reflected backlighting or a nearby window, taking full advantage of the transparent velvet. The final color stage is the most difficult of all. I find it best to add color from light to dark, one at a time across the entire page, so that no single one predominates. Harmony, balance, and organic flow are the keys to success. Finally, after hundreds of hours of sketching, drawing, inking, and painting, the last strokes of color are applied, and the illuminated page is complete. It's funny, but even now that I've been teaching Celtic art for a number of years, I uh, still consider myself a student. Um, I'm always learning, I'm always uh, searching for some hidden knowledge that's just out of reach. But then that's exactly the nature of Celtic art. It's puzzling, intriguing, 
ambiguous, and highly addictive. Scholars can spend their entire lives studying the Book of Kells alone, only to realize in the end how little they really know. So what's the future for Celtic art in the 21st century? Well, a hundred years ago, the, uh, the Celtic revival artists did the best they could do with what they had, but so little was known back then. Um, and in the, the past uh, half century or so, uh, thanks to researchers and artists such as uh, George Bain and Aidan Meehan, um, at last today, uh, the ancient methods have been rediscovered. And so the, the road is clear and the door is open. Um, and there's really never been a better time uh, to be a Celtic artist than right now.